Hello and welcome to Launch Legends. Today we're joined by Tom Geddes of Offline Charts. Tom regularly does big launches and the company does multiple seven figures in revenue. But not long ago, Tom was working as a restaurant manager in a dead end job. He got into online marketing by creating affiliate sites. Over time, he kept learning and launching new products. So much so that now he lives in Hawaii with his family and runs a multiple seven figures successful online marketing agency. So there's a ton of value Tom provides by sharing his journey. But before, if you're listening to this on a podcast, please rate and leave a review. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, rate and review. Hey, Tom, thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate it. So uh, could you tell me how you got into online marketing? Sure, yeah. First, aloha, everybody. So uh, I'm out in Maui, Hawaii. So I always like to start everything off with a big aloha. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Um, Sure. So uh, I got started. Actually, uh, I was in the restaurant business. So I'm originally from Oklahoma. I haven't always lived in Maui. I moved here in 2010. And back in Oklahoma, I was working in the restaurant business. I was a manager and I wanted to desperately get out of that lifestyle. Right. It's it's a lot of hours, Mm -hmm. 65 hours a week. I don't get to see my family on holidays. It's like it was a lot. So I uh, came across this thing online called the 30 day challenge. And it was this whole deal where the whole goal was to make $1 online. Right. So uh, I started doing it. I was doing it in my spare time, going through all their stuff. And uh, it was building these little affiliate sites with like CPA offers. And uh, so I built this little site on how to make money by taking surveys online. And uh, it actually and I not only made a dollar, but it was generating about a hundred bucks a month just on autopilot. Right. And uh, I thought, this is it. I, you know, like, this is what I'm going to do. Like, I, this is going to make me rich. Right. And uh, that was it. That was all I could do. I could never get over the hundred dollar um, hump. And, you know, I was busy working a family. And honestly, like when I look back on it, like I, I loved the idea of being an entrepreneur and having my own business. But at that time, I wasn't willing to do the work that was necessary, right? So I was just kind of like half into it, not really full bore, like it was generating things. And um, so I'm going along, it's not really taking off. I'm getting a little frustrated. And, uh, you know, I'm in that, that mode of like constantly learning, trying to figure it all out. And it's not really clicking. And uh, somebody, I was talking to somebody online and they were like, hey, you know, through this process, you've learned a lot of stuff, right? Like, you know how to build a website, you know how to do SEO, you know about traffic, like, you know, there are local businesses in your area that would, that could use that information. Why don't you get them as a client? Maybe that'll get you some cash flow. And so I started talking to a couple of local businesses and I, I picked up a couple of clients and I was like, wow, this is great. Like, it just seemed much more real to me than making money online. Right. So I started doing that kind of on the side and uh, fast forward my, we're going to move to Maui. And my whole plan is I'm going to leave the restaurant business and I'm going to launch a digital agency. Right. Like I'm going to get to Hawaii. I'm going to, it's going to be big. And my wife is like, you know, we've never been to Hawaii before. Maybe you should have a job when we get there. And I saw this restaurant, the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, they're hiring. Why don't you apply? And so I applied. And uh, because I didn't want the job, they were like, well, what, what salary do you want to make? And so I gave them like a number way higher than what I was making in Oklahoma, hoping they wouldn't take it. And they were like, okay, you're hired. And I was like, oh, so now I'm, so now I have this job. We, we fly, we sell everything we have in Oklahoma. We fly me and my, my two daughters. They were, my oldest daughter was, wasn't even one. I think she was a couple years old, three or four, maybe. And, uh, we moved to Hawaii. I'm working at this restaurant and I'm miserable, you know, like, I don't like it. I realized why I wanted to get out of this. And then fortune stepped in, which I can say today, they fired me like eight months in. They were like, we're letting you go. And, uh, I thought, what am I going to do now? You know? So I thought, well, you know, I have this idea to start an agency, so I'll do that. So I started reaching out to businesses and, uh, couldn't get a single client. Like it just did not work out. Right. So I'm doing all this prospecting. I'm collecting unemployment because I, you know, we needed money <laughs> and, uh, and nothing's working. And so then it, it fast forward, that goes on this, this cycle of just like 
I'm buying products on Warrior Plus, trying to figure out what to do, looking for the thing that's going to click, that's going to help me make it. And um, I'm doing all that and nothing's working. And then I get this letter from unemployment. They're like, look, you've been on unemployment for 50 weeks. It ends in two weeks. Like, and so now I'm, I'm like, God, I don't want to get a real job, you know? So I, uh, I found this course on Warrior Plus and it was like the most expensive course I'd ever bought. It was like $50, which that's crazy, right? And I'm like, I think this is a good idea. So I, I said, this is my last effort. I'm going to get this and I'm just going to implement it, right? And so I buy it, <clears throat> I implement it and uh, it works like Game Busters. Like I go out, it's uh, basically what it was, was this jumbo postcard and you sold ad spaces on it, right? And so I just started, I went to Office Max. I spent like 30 bucks to have them make up this laminated mock-up of it. Mm -hmm. And I just started walking into businesses, right? And said, hey, look, I'm going to do this mailer. I'm going to send this out to 10,000 people right here in PA. That's where I live. And in seven days, I sold 16 ad spots at 500 bucks a pop. So in the, in the, at the end of seven days, I've got $7,000 in revenue, about four grand of that was profit. And now I have connections with 16 businesses that I didn't know before, right? So I'm like, this is it. <clears throat> like, this is the, this is, I've got an agency now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I start doing this mailer. But again, I, I like to think I'm an entrepreneur, but at this time I was not an entrepreneur. So I very promptly like got that business into trouble because I didn't really understand like, the money management part, like all the things that went with it. And I was just doing the mailer. So I had to like make a hard choice. Like, okay, well, what am I, you know, how do I get out of this? So I, I decided to start focusing on selling digital services to those people that have been on the mailer. So when you said, when you said, when you say you got the business into trouble, what did you exactly do to get into that trouble? Cash flow, cash flow. So what happened for me was, <clears throat> You know, the mailer was generating some income, but it wasn't enough to live on. Maui is an expensive place to live, right? So I'm doing these mailers. And what happens is I basically, I have to do another mailer to be able to mail out and deliver the mailer that was coming before. So I'm in this endless cycle, right? Like I'm doing a mailer, I'm collecting cash, but I'm using the money to pay bills and that keep things afloat. And then I, the mailer comes from the printer and I need money to mail it. So I got to do another mailer. To, and then it's like, it was this vicious cycle, right? So finally, I'm like, this has got to stop. So I, I had a mailer that had come back from the printer, but I didn't have the money to mail it. Mm -hmm. So I contacted all the businesses on it and said, look, <clears throat> I got to be honest. I got into trouble. I, I don't have the money to mail this. I'm going to refund your money but you just have to work with me. And uh, that was a hard thing to do, right? It was kind of an ego check. And uh, so I started, what I did is instead of doing the mailer, I started reaching out to the businesses that I had contacts with and offering to build them websites, do social media management, mm -hmm. SEO, and people started, um, you know, they buying those services. So, cause they knew me from the mailer, right? And I'd given them results. And so now I was able to generate cash flow without having to really spend any money on fulfillment. And so I'm doing that. The agency's picking back up. It's, it's going through. And I, yeah, go ahead. So, were you, were you, so when you said you were picking up all these, uh, all these contracts for SEO, website development, all that stuff, how were you doing fulfillment? Were you doing everything yourself or you were outsourcing it? I was doing pretty much doing everything myself. So I was building the websites. I was, it was like, it was a lot. <laughs> okay. Like it was, uh, it was a lot of work, but the thing that had kind of shifted for me, like I was determined to make it work. Right. So like I was working a lot of hours, I was doing all this stuff and it was very up and down. And, um, but you know, as time went by, I started to get more traction. Things started to kind of level out. And I thought, well, you know, one of the things I could do to like increase my cash flow is that I could put a course together on how I did this mailer because, you know, it, it delivered 16 clients. And I know there are a lot of people out there that don't have clients. So I basically one weekend I was I was sick and uh, I thought, you know, well, I'm here at home. I'm sick. What am I going to do? So I, I started this Facebook group 
And uh, it's not around anymore, but I started this Facebook group. I put out on my Facebook feed, like, hey, I'm starting this Facebook group about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I somehow managed to get 50 people in this group, right? And as soon as I got 50 people in the group, I went in the group and said, hey, I'm going to do a training this Saturday, and I'm going to show how I did this mail or how I got 16 clients. And I'm going to give you like all my templates. I'm going to send you some sample cards from mailers. Like I'll give you my contracts. Like I'll basically show you the whole business. Like you'll have everything you need, like all the stuff that, that it took me, you know, years to get together. Mm -hmm. I'll just give to you and I'll do a training on how I did it. And it'll be 150 bucks. And I got three people to buy that thing out of the 50 people. Right. So I went on and I did the training and, uh, now I'm thinking like, okay, this is something, right? Like I can turn this into a business. But again, I just didn't really know what to do next. Mm -hmm. And uh, then one day this email pops up and there's a guy, he's in the online space and he's like, hey, look, I'm looking to coach a few people and it's just something I'm testing out. It's, you know, I want, you know, if you are interested, click this link. And I thought, well, this is going to be way more money than I can afford, but I'll click the link anyway. And I click the link and the guy is charging 150 bucks. And I'm like, 150 bucks? Like, well, this can't even be ripped. So anyway, but I bought it. I was like, okay, I'll do this coaching. And uh, so we get on the coaching call and he's like, so, you know, what do you, what do you have? And I show him this recording I have of this thing I did in the Facebook group. And he's like, this is great. Like we're going to do a launch on warrior plus with this. So he basically walked me through what to do, like how to set up a sales page, how to put my product on Warrior Plus, how to set up a funnel. Like we created a, a main offer and an upgrade. That's all it was, main offer, upgrade. And he said, you know, like you need to get some people to promote this. And uh, so what I did, because I was, you know, like buying products on Warrior Plus and I was actually trying to implement them. Mm -hmm. I had reached out to people I had bought products from before to ask them questions, right? Like, I'm trying to do this. It's not working, you know, any advice. And so I had some, like some of these, a couple of these people knew me just from being one of their good. Now I look back, I was a great customer, right? Like I bought everything. So they were probably like, this guy's a good customer, you know? So I reached out to those guys, the guy, that, even the guy that I bought the first $50 product from. Mm -hmm. And I said, Hey, look, I'm going to do a product on this thing that I learned from you. Like, will you have a problem with that? Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, not only do I not have a problem. He's like, man, I'll promote you. <laughs> and turns out like, he's like one of the bigger affiliates in that space on warrior plus. Mm -hmm. So him and another guy um, promoted that launch, just two, just two people that I got from that relationship. And we launched, it was called the coupon cash, uh, coupon cash system or coupon mm -hmm. cash mailer. Mm -hmm. We launched that product on Warrior Plus. It was like, I think we charged $12 for it, $12.95. Okay. And uh, we sold 2,000 copies of that thing yeah. in the course of four days. And, uh, you know, just one offer and one upgrade. And uh, so now I have this list of people, right? And uh, yeah, go ahead. How much revenue did you uh, generate from the, those 2,000 customers? I I think after everything was said and done, I think I made like five, maybe six grand off of that. Because I mean, it was like we were giving away, we gave away uh, 75, I think 75% or 100% of the front end to the affiliates, hmm. right? And then they made 50% on the upgrade. So I was giving a lot away to the affiliates because I was new, but right? You, but, yeah, you got 2,000 customers. I think that's, that's worth a lot more than what you gave away, right? Oh, well, that really opened my eyes to just like how the power of not like, especially with launches, like, you know, now we, I do launches for a very specific reason, right? To bring in new customers. So I'm not really concerned about how much money we make on a launch mm -hmm. because I know the customers are going to come in and then we have other things to sell them, other things to do with them. Mm -hmm. And we're building a community, right? But in this first launch, I did, you know, that was like my eye-opening moment of like, oh, so this is how you get the leads in, right? Mm -hmm. And it really, that traction I got only from those two affiliates because they just happened to be bigger affiliates on Warrior Plus. Mm -hmm. And so once they started making sales, people saw that thing moving up the top seller list, right? And then they wanted to jump on, even though I didn't have a relationship with them. 
Mm-hmm. And then, of course, now that I have this list, people wanted me to promote their stuff. And um, yeah, it was kind of off to the races, but it was a lot of like really not knowing what to do in the beginning, you know, because like now you have this list, you got to write emails every day. And so I'm like figuring all this out. And it's, again, a lot of work. And uh, at that time, I ran into another guy here on Maui who had a digital agency. His name's Nick Ponzi. Okay. And uh, I was like, we were, you know, talking. I was like, man, I put out this product, but I could use some help. Do you want to help me do these launches? Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily, he said yes. And so in 2016, we made a partnership and we started a company called Offline Sharks. And so... Uh, sorry, Tom, let's, let's just go back. Yeah. How much money do you reckon you made over time from those 2,000 customers you accumulated? I know it's, uh, you, you probably wouldn't know the exact number, but what's a rough estimate? Well, I mean, I know that that, you know, those, those first customers are what fueled the entire business. Right. And now, you know, today we do over seven figures just off the information products. Like that doesn't count our, like we both have agencies where we deal with local clients, but that doesn't count any of that revenue just off of the, just off of our products and stuff. Great. So um, I think the lesson there is that first, if you're doing the first launch, don't worry about the revenue. It's all about the customers. Get as many customers as you can because then you can just keep up selling and then keep promoting your other stuff to them eventually. And that's enough. 2,000 is a big number to kickstart your company. Yeah, it is a big number. And I think like it's not just your first launch that you want to do that on. It's any launch you do. Like We actually labeled them lead launches. That's what we call them because we do them strictly to bring in fresh names and leads into our business and get activity going. Um, but yeah, you definitely, I think with the launch, your, your goal is not to, is not to, uh, you know, not to make a bunch of money. You just want, like, w- our goal has always been just to break even on a launch. Mm-hmm. Now we've been very fortunate. We've always made money on our launches, but like, we're happy with just breaking even, right? Because we know those, those people come in. And of course, you know, what happens over time is, you know, you do your, you do your first launch. So here's a couple of things I think to take from that story. One is the idea that the launch is about growing your customer base, bringing them in. Um, because we didn't, you know, Nick and I were both basically like, we didn't have money to spend on traffic. We didn't have, like, we were doing things on a very shoestring budget. And so when you don't have that, a launch is a great way mm-hmm. if you can get some traction. The key though is getting, is being able to have affiliates that will promote you. And so I think the other lesson to take away from that story is, If you're a consumer in your market, like reach out to the people you buy products from, ask smart questions, like interact with them so that they, you know, you don't want to be a pain. You don't want to annoy them. But like, if you have a question, email them and ask them, or maybe even reach out and see if they'll, you know, do some private coaching for a couple hours, or you can hire them to, Mm -hmm. you know, get on the phone with you so that you can at least have some kind of relationship. So if you ever do a launch or something like that, you've already got some people that you can reach out to. You're not just reaching out to them cold, right? Um, And then once you do a launch, you'll be able, you know, once you have a list of people, you'll be able to promote other people's stuff. And, you know, then you get that like, hey, they'll promote you, you promote them and those kinds of things, right? So I think those are two. That's a great. Yeah, I think those are. Yeah, I think those are two big things to take away from that. The other, the other thing is like as you so in the beginning when you're doing launches, right? Like you do a launch, cash flow comes in, but then pretty quickly, there's you know because the launch is over, there's no the cash flow doesn't continue to come in, so you have to do another launch to keep that cycle going, right? And as you do those though, like your email list grows. So when you're promoting other people's products, like your revenue in the beginning is going to be really small because you don't have a big list. But as it grows, that revenue starts to increase over time. So now you're making money, you know, you're making some money from the launches, plus you're generating affiliate revenue, Mm -hmm. right? And then you can start to do other things for your people, like hold special trainings. Um, You know, I think one of the things that, that we didn't do um, soon enough was build in recurring revenue, right? So I think if you're out there and you're thinking about launching a product or the sooner you can build something into your business that where people pay you each month, the mm-hmm. better, even if it's a very small amount, because, you know, again, when you do a launch, like cash flow comes in and then it dies off. And so you want to try to increase that 
bar that you, you know, that flow of cash. And so not starting from zero is super important. And, you know, like over the years, we've just, we've refined our process. Like we have a very, um, you know, we have a very clear path now. We do a launch and then we have several things that we do right after that, that monetize those leads and that traffic, right? What kind and, of uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about those here. And um, yeah, well, let me just talk about them now. So for instance, so one, we've refined our funnel process, right? So, you know, now we have, one, we've raised our prices. So instead of doing things at $12, Right. Like now we're doing them at twenty seven dollars. But you have to like judge kind of, I think, where you're at in the marketplace for that, because remember, again, our goal is to get as many customers in the front end as possible. And and a lower price does that. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, what we kind of figured out probably uh, after a year of doing this was, okay. If we're going to bring people in on the front end, we can bring them in, run them through the upgrades. And then if we do a webinar after the launch, then we can make money from the webinar, Mm -hmm. right? So what we decided to do was like reverse engineer that process. So we actually found a webinar that we liked, and then we built a product that was in line with that webinar, right? So we said, okay, here's the webinar we're going to do. And then we built a product around that was like, it was kind of like the first step, like the webinar was the next step of the, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. So it was actually, it was on AdWords. That was this product that we did was on AdWords. So we knew we were going to be doing a webinar on how to have a PPC agency, right? So we created a product called local AdWords income where we showed how we were helping clients with PPC we showed them how to get clients. We gave them a bunch of stuff. And then the next step was this webinar was going to show them how they could get it all done for them. That's a right? great strategy. Oh. So basically, rather than creating a product, and then you know you're not going to make that much money on that product anyway, because that's just for Legion, and then going out there to find a webinar, which is going to make you money at the back end. Uh, rather than doing that, you're doing it other way. So if you do the way where you actually create the product and then go find the webinar, then it's a very highly likely chance that you would probably not find a good enough webinar to monetize, right? So instead, yeah. reverse engineering, that's a great strategy, actually. So Yeah, well, and the more you can make that front-end product congruent with the webinar that you're going to do on the back end, the better, the better off you are. Um, so, and then that makes the whole part of the front-end product, like, again, like, you can set your pricing because your goal... It's not to make money on that. It's you want to get as many people as possible on the webinar. So anybody who buys your front end product, they're they're registered to the webinar automatically. So it's a bit like people you can get in the front end. It's a bit like ClickFunnels is doing it, right? So they have the software which uh, is going to bring them a lot of money, but it's very hard for people to understand. what well, everyone knows what ClickFunnels is now, but yeah. initially they wouldn't understand the value proposition. So instead, instead of selling the software as a front end, they just created all sorts of free books and all these info products at the you know, front end and then pushed all those, all those people to the software. Yeah. It's very similar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very similar. And well, it's, you know, we were talking about before we started recording dot com secrets. Like I read that book and I, we just started implementing things out of there. I was like, well, how can we apply this to what we're doing? Right. So that's kind of what we started doing. And I, I think that idea of going backwards may even be from there. I mean, that's not original with me. Right. Like, it's just like some people talk about, but I don't think very many people do. Um, so anyway, so that once we had that process in place, we were like, okay, so now people would buy a front end product. We have an upgrade. Then we started adding like a down sell. And then, you know, because we were doing more launches, like we had past products. So we would always make another step that was like, when a launch is over, we wait, raise the price of our product. So we would take a, a product that we had launched before and we'd put it in like the fourth spot in the funnel and say, and make it a discount. So currently this sells for $97, but today you can get it for $14.95, something like that, right? So so now we had a little more robust funnel. So front end offer, upgrade, down sell, another offer. And then, you know, then after the, the launch is over, we do the webinar. Mm-hmm. So with that was kind of our process for a while. And so then we decided we wanted to do software. Right. So we decided to build the software. So we're, we're, we built the software. 
we do a launch around this to, and we're going to do the webinar on the back end and sell this software, right? And like, we're trying to make changes to the software. Like we're working on it all the way through the launch and it's just not really coming together. And like three days before we're supposed to do the webinar, my partner and I are looking at the software and we're like, oh my God, we can't sell this. Like, it's not like, it just wasn't, it just wasn't doing what we wanted it to do. Right. And I, we thought if we sell this, we are going to be in big trouble. Right. And, uh, but we've got this webinar, like we have to do the webinar. Right. And, uh, so man, it's super stressful. So I'm, I'm like stressing about this. So I go to bed, I wake up the next day, I call Nick and I say, Hey, I know what we're going to do. Instead of the software, we're going to start a monthly membership. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to write a sales page right now. We're going to do, we'll do two trainings each month and we'll just create the whole membership live. Like, so we, we don't even have a membership, right? Like I made a members area in ClickFunnels, but there was nothing in it. So I'm like, we'll just do training, you know, we'll do two trainings a month and we'll just put them in there and uh, we'll charge for that. So I built, I built a, I wrote a sales page for it. I built out a webinar around it. And so we did that. So that was like two days, right? I put all that together in like two days. We do the webinar and um, we sold the membership at a really low price. I think it was like maybe 37 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got 200 members. Off of How many webinar. people did you get on the webinar? Um, I want to say there was a couple of hundred. You know, we had, you know, we had a couple of hundred people on the webinar. And then through the replays, we, we ended up getting a couple hundred people from our community into this membership, right? right. And, uh, and so that's how our monthly membership was born. And then we, we were just creating the content live. And then as we built up a library, we shifted things and we started putting things in sections. And then we didn't have to do live trainings every week. We had all this content already in there. So we started doing like weekly coaching calls and they would just have access to the mm -hmm. training, right? And, um, you know, today we charge one ninety seven for that membership because it's got a lot of stuff in it, right? Like, I mean, it's very, very robust. There's software tools, there's training, there's weekly coaching calls. Like, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of stuff. So, you know, we just kind of continue to grow that out. Um, but like that, that shift of having the recurring revenue every month was a big shift in our business because it meant we didn't have to launch as much anymore. Right. Because now we had more steady cash flow. Plus, we were doing, you know, doing the webinars, which brought in more revenue. And then we were able to start, you know, like as we're growing, we're starting to like we were very kind of strategic about our alliances. So we were working with some people on Warrior Plus. So we we did exactly what Russell says in his book. Like I made a dream 50. Right. Here's the 50 people we want to work with in the industry. Mm -hmm. And like we didn't know any of them. Right. So it's like, you're looking at some of these people and a lot of them are people that I had bought products from. So I'm like, I don't know, how am I ever going to know these people? Right. And, uh, but it was like, we would, we would see one affiliate that would work with us and we would, we realized like, Oh, well they know these other people. So we just started like, we started strategically teaming up with people and doing either launches or promos with them with the sole goal of getting them to introduce us to the people that we wanted to work with. Right. And, uh, and that like really worked all of a sudden we were like in this circle of people that we, that we wanted to do promos with and they were, you know, they were bigger affiliates and of course we were growing. So we're able to bring more value to those relationships, right? Like we can do a promo with them and we can generate quite a few sales. So Anyway, so that's just, that's sort of how we continue to grow, right? Like continuing to um, just, I mean, like our number one goal always is, you know, how can we help our, we call them sharks because we're offline sharks, right? So how can we help our sharks mm -hmm. have success and generate revenue? So, you know, everything we do is predicated on that. Like we don't, we don't do products on things that we don't do ourselves. Like everything that we talk about is stuff that we're doing in our own agencies that we're getting results with. Like, you know, it's all, you know, it's all real stuff. Like we're not just creating products to create products. So, um, you know, that's the, the first part of that is like, you know, having good information and always having your, your customer's best interest at heart. Right. 
Like that's really the, the underlying principle. The second thing though, that we started doing really early on is we started growing a community. So we started a Facebook group, everybody that buys our products, we drive them into the Facebook group. We post content in the Facebook group all the time. We really like got people interacting with each other. We do Facebook lives in there. Now that, you know, that group is really big. We have like, I think 8,000 people in that group, all mainly people that have bought our products. Right. But like they hang out, they ask questions, they like, they are super awesome. Like that group is a wealth of information. If you want to start a digital agency, like there's some really smart people in there. And so because we started, you know, building a community, we started calling them sharks. Like people post shark memes in there all the time. Like they just really like embrace it, right? Like we're part of this community. And so, you know, now we're able to really bring value to them because they're part of something. We have, you know, great products they can use. Now we're really building like uh, loyal, loyal customers, right? Like they love our stuff. And so, you know, I think that's something that you want to focus on doing early on as well is, you know, get out of this mindset that it's just a one and done transaction. Like you want to build a community. So, you know, start a Facebook group, bring people in there. Now it takes a lot of work, which I think is why most people don't do it because if you, you know, I don't know how many Facebook groups you belong to, but most of them suck, right? Like you get in there nobody's posted for months. Like it just, it's really like, it takes, it takes effort to build a really good group. You've got to be in there posting information every day in the beginning because other people aren't going to do it. You got to post good content. You have to be interacting with people when they comment, like, um, you know, so, you know, it takes work, but it pays off because you build this thing where people are just super excited about what you're doing. Like right now, you know, we're in the middle of the shutdown. We do a, a Facebook live every Friday in that group. And I mean, we're getting a hundred to 200 people on the live, right? Every week. And so, you know, we deliver content. We talk about things that are going on in the community. Like if we're, you know, running a, a if we have anything we're promoting, we talk about those. Like we do, and it, it's so it's another way um, for us to interact and talk to our customers outside of the email list, outside of doing things like that, right? So building that community has been has been huge for us, and you know it's allowed us to do other things too. Like you know we've you know as we've progressed along, we've you know we've started offering private coaching. We've started you know we have our own uh, our own software, our own, you know, webinars that we can do to our people and do to, for other people's lists. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we also like, because we have this Facebook group where people post all this content, they ask questions, we post content. We were looking at that one day and we're like, you know, we have all this great content in here, but it's a lot, right? People come in that group and it's just a lot to keep up with. So how can we make this better for them? Um, so we decided, like, what if we made like a digest where we pulled out all of the all of the most popular questions, all of the good content, mm -hmm. and we put it in a PDF and we sent it to them each month. And uh, and, we're, and my my wife actually came up with the name. She called it Shark Bites. <laughs> so and so then we we're like, okay, we have this PDF. So we just we started. That's another recurring subscription. So we charge like nine dollars for that. Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes in the Facebook group, if they don't want to try to keep up, like they pay us nine bucks a month and every month they get a PDF with all the most popular posts, all the content that they want, mm -hmm. like links to stuff. And, um, and so, you know, people love that digest because they don't, you know, they get the information, but also from the business side, like that, all of that content, those things we were creating, that stuff we were already doing. And now we had a way to monetize it, right? Like we're doing it anyway. <laughs> So how many people did you manage to get on? Um, how did how did you how many people did you manage to get to buy this um, PDF? So we have a couple hundred. We have a couple hundred people on that on that list that get that every month. Okay. So I mean, it's not like it's not a lot of money, but that really wasn't the point of it, right? Like we just wanted to one give them something valuable at a really um, at a really low cost because. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have, uh, when you're bringing a bunch of people into your business, like, you know, people are all at, at different levels and in different situations, right? And 
one thing that used to frustrate uh, me and that used to frustrate Nick is you're trying to build your agency. You're getting started, right? You don't have any money. Like you're, you're just trying to scrape this thing together. You go on this webinar, you see this great thing. You're like, Oh, this is what I need. And then it's like a thousand dollars, $2,000 or all these products are super high price. Right? So one of the things that we've always uh, kept in mind with our customers is that, you know, there are customers that need help that just don't have the financial means to, to buy the higher, you know, higher price things. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to leave those people out. So we always try to deliver really great free content. We always deliver low, some low cost things, right? And we give them the information they need to get to that next level, right? Like we don't want somebody to come in and be like, get in our group. And then they think like, Oh, well, I mean, I love this group, but I need to, I need to be making $10,000 a month just to be a part of it. Like we don't want that, right? Like we want there to be places for people to find the information regardless of their situation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, we have, you know, we do blog posts on our website. We have, you know, we've got, there's things that we offer for free to help people. Like we've got the lower price thing, like the shark bites. We've got, you know, uh, there's there's all different kinds of levels in there, right? Um, just because we don't want somebody to come in and not be able to get help, right? We do those we do those Facebook lives every week. So even if somebody can't afford to be in our monthly membership or they can't afford to be part of our private coaching. Like they can come on that Facebook live and ask us questions and we'll answer them. And we'll talk very frankly about what we're, what we're doing or what their question is. Right. So, you know, I think that's important at giving people that opportunity, right? Like not being so worried about, um, you know, obviously you have a business and you want your business to be profitable, but you know, again, it goes back to that. You still want to provide value, you know, and not always be thinking, it's not always about the money, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not always about that. And I think people pick up on that kind of stuff. So, I mean, Tom, you've come a long way from where you started uh, many years ago. Uh, and you're doing a bunch of different things and you've learned a lot, you know, learned a lot. But it, just imagine someone is starting out. What's the one advice you would give them? Just the one thing for them to do every single day when they're starting out. Well, I think like in terms of if if you don't have like you have to kind of figure out what you want to do, right? Like I know when I was trying to make money online, mm-hmm. um, I didn't really have anything like I wasn't like really doing like in hindsight now I could have taken that one little site that was making a hundred bucks a month, right? I could have put out a course on how to create an affiliate site that makes a hundred bucks a month, right? Mm -hmm. Like that probably would have sold like crazy at the time. I didn't think it was that impressive, right? So you need to do something and have some kind of success with it. And then as quickly as you can start showing other people that haven't been able to get to that point, Mm -hmm. how you did that. Right. And I think the big takeaway from that is that it's really easy to look at like kind of where we're at now with offline sharks and think, Oh, well, you guys are super big. Like, like, of course you're, you know, people look up to you. It's like, but it wasn't, it wasn't always that way. And I think the reason we were able to get to this point is because when, when there's a guru out there telling you how to do something, it's, it's really, a lot of times it's not relatable, right? Like, there's a guru. You're like, of course they have success, right? I'm not a guru. Like, how, how am I going to do it? But if you come across somebody who seems to be just like you, they're just a normal person. They seem very down to earth, but they found a way to get one client or they found a way to make a hundred dollars from one website a month, like a hundred bucks when you're broke. Well, you look at that and you're like, that could change my life, right? If I could just get an extra hundred bucks, like that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. So people relate to that more and they will follow you and they'll listen to you. You don't have to be the guru and the super duper expert. You just need to be a person that had a result that they're looking to get. Right. The the key to that though, again, is like, you don't want to portray yourself as a guru. You want to portray yourself as the guy like, look, I'm not a guru. I just, I figured out how to do this and I'll show you how to do it. Right. 
And that, you know, that, that, um, that setup, I think is where most people go wrong. Cause like at the time I didn't, I didn't think anybody would, you know, would pay for a course like that. Cause to me it wasn't, you know, it was just a hundred bucks. Right. But they absolutely would. So when I got to the point of getting some clients, like I knew that, like I didn't have a, you know, I didn't have an, an uber sec- successful digital agency. You know, I wasn't making, um, you know, seven figures in my agency. My agency was, you know, I was, I eventually got up to over six figures. Like it was a six figure agency, but like, that's a point where people want to be right. Mm -hmm. So when I was able to come back and say, look, I'm just a dad. I got two kids. I used to be a restaurant manager. I mean, my business partner, Nick, he used to be a mechanic. Like we use that. And, you know, we tell people that because they relate to that. They go, Oh, I have a job too. I don't want my job anymore. Like, you don't really have to, you don't have to make anything up, right? Like just, just, you know, just tell your story. And if you have some experience that you can share, like share it. Great. Tom, thank you very much. That was great advice. And uh, thank you for being on the show. And uh, hope. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me, man. It's a lot of fun. Thank you very much, Tom.